What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. Invest 96L has formed in the Atlantic over here. We're going to go ahead and go over that for you guys today in this very detailed update for you guys. We now have a 70% chance of development. Disorganized cloudiness and showers located about 1,100 miles east of the Leeward Islands are associated with a tropical wave with broad, the broad area of low pressure. Environmental conditions are forecast to be gradual, uh, favorable for gradual development, excuse me, for the system during the next few days, and a tropical depression is likely to form during the early part of next week. It is expected to move northwestward at about 15 miles per hour for the next day or so, and then turn northward towards the central subtropical Atlantic by late Monday or Tuesday. 30% chance of development in the next 48 hours, and a 70% chance of formation in the next seven days. So this thing is likely to develop. If we go ahead and take a look at back at satellite, 96L is right there. We're going to actually go ahead and... Uh, get a closer look at this right here on satellite. As you can see, there is not too much storm activity, although there is starting to, in the last few hours, and uh, some initiating right here across parts of the northern part of the system. We'll actually go ahead and next show you water vapor as well as other systems right here. The water vapor, where this thing is right now, it's in a deep, it's in a nice moist pocket right now. So where this is going, it's going to be moving through a bit more dry air. So it's going to cause a little bit of problems in the short term. But in the long run, it's going to get into some more moist air as it approaches the subtropical Atlantic. But for now, it's kind of battling a bit of dry air, although there is some moist upper uh, upper and lower levels right there. So definitely something to remain cautious of and pay attention to. We're going to go ahead and show you the visible shortwave right here, kind of to give you an understanding of what's going on. Basically, not very organized for now. However, right now is right now. And where this is going, the conditions are expected to get better and better as time continues to go on. But we'll go ahead and give you the latest information. 20 knots right now. Pressure is 1,013 millibars. Radius of maximum winds is 90 nautical miles. So the location is 16.6 degrees north, 44.1 degrees west. So that's what we have going on right here. We're going to go ahead and show you some track models and then the intensity. Track models right here basically have this keeping staying out in the Atlantic. So unless you're a shipping interest, it's not going to do that much. Intensity models are a bit interesting. Majority of them keep them at around tropical storm, although a hurricane is not out of the question, according to one of the models right here, as well as the official European forecast once it gets up to the subtropical tropical Atlantic. So that's what we have going on right here. We're going to go ahead and show you what's working for and against this thing. What's working for it is the global sea temperatures. Where this thing is, it's about right here, and the temperatures are about 28 degrees Celsius, which is about 82 degrees Fahrenheit for those of you who live in the United States. So plenty of warm water to go around on that front. It's going to be moving through that warm water, and it's going to stay very warm for the next several days or so. So that's why we're a bit concerned with this thing developing. And then we have this thing right here, which is our ocean heat content met, uh, index right here. OHC, where this thing is supposed to be going, is about 50, about 50, 75. Some areas are getting around 100 OHC. So definitely a lot of fuel for this thing to develop right here. But there's also the OHC over here in the Caribbean right here that I'm continuing to be concerned with. We're seeing several areas of 175 plus OHC or ocean heat content. That's how much energy that's in the ocean. And that's especially concerning considering that let's say we skip July and we move into August. Let's say we go into September. Let's say a, a tropical system, a tropical wave with enough uh, warm water and decent wind shear moves through these areas. That right there can cause quite a bit of rapid and explosive intensification right there. And that's something that I'm particularly concerned with because that could have future implications a couple of months down the road. And I don't think anyone wants to think about that right now. We'll continue to monitor that as time to go, continues to go on. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the wind shear. And the wind shear where this is going right now, it has been on a downward trend, but it is still going to encounter some shear as it gets to the subtropics over here. But the shear across much of the Atlantic continues to fluctuate right now. It's kind of shear is a bit increased uh, for today. Yesterday, it was kind of up and down. So this is typical of what you would see in late July right here. But it has been on a downward trend compared to where we were last month. 
So definitely something to monitor as hurricane season continues to go on. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the shear forecast and the moisture component to all this. Right now the forecast is calling for weakening shear across parts of the main development region and then once again more into the Atlantic right here for the next few days or so. By five days out, we see a, a much more clear picture right here of shear. And if anything develops in the next five days in this area, if we were taking shear and warm water to account, yeah, I could definitely see something developing right there if we took those two components into account. But if we go ahead and look at it and cross-check it with dry air, well, there is a lot of it is covered in dry air. So for now, I'm not terribly concerned as there is still quite a lot of Sahara dust in the Atlantic Ocean. But if we go ahead and go back to the shear, it is expected to continue fluctuating into early August, although once again, it is on a downward trend. But on August 7th, we do have a bit of a resurgence across much of the Atlantic, although parts of the MDR, parts much of the Gulf of Mexico, and a lot of these areas right here, that definitely... Uh, start, uh, is on a downward trend right there. And if we go ahead and take a look at the shear forecast the relative humidity, yeah, it's one last bit of dry air that moves through before things start to calm down on that front and that last line of defense starts to kind of erode away. But if we take a look at the GFS, interestingly enough, and get a little bit of a longer a trend right here that dry air especially in the in the western atlantic that dry air just calms down considerably right there and we have a bit of a moisture surgence into the gulf into the caribbean into a lot of these areas right there and as you can see that sahara dust calms down considerably in the longer run so this is where we are now with the big areas of sahara dust moving through and then by the mid-august or so we start seeing less and less of these trends going on so so that's what we have going on on there. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some ensemble runs to see some potential development. If we go ahead and show you the European right here, it is still calling for potential tropical storm hurricane scenarios moving through right here for this one. There's a couple of tropical waves that move through the main development region, but considering the, all the dry air that's there, I'm not particularly too concerned on that, those ones right there. We're going to go ahead and show you the GFS ensembles, kind of give you the zero Z to kind of mix and match what's going on right here and if we go ahead and show you the zero z right here basically for the gfs it's actually underperforming the european which is pretty interesting right here at least for this tropical wave right there although it does have the, the probability of more tropical systems starting to develop in the main development region as we get into early into early august into mid-august right there as that dust is starting to recede now we're going to go ahead and show you the GPS ensembles right here. And the GPS ensembles are pretty interesting. They match the European strength-wise. And then after that, they're calling for a lot more scenarios, a lot more ensemble members of development, continuing to have some potential scenarios of a U.S. impact in mid-August. We'll have to monitor that as time continues to go on. But with that being said, we're closing the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. And if you want to come hang out with us at Storms United and see the behind the scenes and how we make these videos and these weather forecasts, the link is in the description down below or the link is right over there to our Discord server. Feel free to come join us and hang out with us. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.